I'd like to wish everyone a Happy New Year! Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Phillies Head Still Media. Today, we're going to have our ninth weekly update of the offseason. As we're going to turn around some Phillies news and some all-around baseball news. Thank you guys for getting this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please hit the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Um, so, uh, I hope everyone has a happy new year. I just was on making the New Year's Day Q&A. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again for, uh, you know, asking all those questions and giving some opinions. I really appreciate it. Um, so now it is time for the weekly update. Uh, so it was the week of Christmas and New Year's, uh, so not really much was happening, uh, you know, as we would expect. Of course, you know, especially with this annoying lockout that we're all, you know, sick and tired of. It's been going on, uh, now for a month. It is just annoying. It's just very, very annoying. Uh, there's absolutely, you know, really nothing to talk about. Uh, so I decided to kind of take a look back and, you know, talk about some former fills and, uh, you know, make posts about that. Uh, so uh, the first fill I talked about, uh, you know, was a, uh, you know, key piece of the OA championship. A guy that won an NL Rookie of the Year in 2005 and an NL MVP in 2006. And that is, of course, Ryan Howard. Um, and I uh, showed a clip of his final career home run uh, in 2016 off of, uh, you know, New York Mets Bartolo Colon. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that ball was just absolutely clobbered. And, uh, and that was his 25th home run of the season that year. Uh, and uh, what a way to go out, right? I mean, a really, really great career not a Hall of Fame career um, but uh, you know a Hall of Fame you know Phillies career that's why the Phillies gave him such re you know great recognition for the career that he had in Philly over 350 career home runs no question he definitely would have cracked over 400 uh, if he had not you know tours Achilles uh, in the 2011 uh, NLDS against the St. Louis Cardinals I don't really think there's any doubt that he definitely would have hit over 400 career home runs and it's very unfortunate that he had to have uh, that you know that's such a devastating uh, you know this is a career, pretty much is a career changing injury. Of course, it's not a career ending injury, but a career changing injury. Um, and, uh, you know, not for the good. Uh, definitely not for the good. And, uh, of course, you know, no injury is, you know, ever for the good. Um, but, uh, you know, it definitely changed, you know, the course of his career. And he just, you know, you know his productivity uh, during his final couple of years just wasn't there. And the funny thing I found was, as I just said, you know, 25 home runs. 25 home runs in his final year. Of course, he hit under 200. Uh, but he still was able to hit the ball over the wall at a good amount. Uh, he was a very strong guy. Uh, no question. Martin Howard uh, was a very strong guy. And he had a really, really, you know, just a nice clean stroke to the baseball. And uh, as I just said, I was a big, big fan of the way he played the game. Of course, he was on the Hall of Fame ballot. I mean, he pretty much has no chance of making it. As I said, I don't think he had a Hall of Fame career, but he had a very good career. So I'm very happy I was able to talk a little bit about Ryan Howard. And moving on here, uh, you know, Phillies pitcher Aaron Nola uh, got engaged on Christmas. Uh, to his, you know, now fiance. Uh, so congratulations to Aaron and his new fiance uh, on the engagement. Going to tie the knot and uh, get married. Uh, so congratulations to him, and uh, you know, hopefully that you know allows him to start pitching a little bit better, right? I mean, uh, you know, hopefully now that he's you know got something great going on in his personal life, and it's a wonderful thing to get married like that. And um, so I hope that he's happy, right? So congratulations. Uh, to Aaron and his uh, fiancée on that great accomplishment. And Aaron's definitely a good guy, right? And I love nothing more to have him succeed. And uh, there's a life outside of baseball, too, uh, you know, with family and, and all that stuff. So I'm really glad that he's, uh, you know, got that. I mean, that's, that's probably the best Christmas gift he's probably got. Um, so uh, congratulations. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to do that. Um, so... So congratulations, it's a wonderful thing. Also, I talked a little bit about J.T. Ramuto. I made a little discussion post. They said, do you see him bouncing back in 2022? There's a lot of speculation going around as to why he had... I'm not even going to say a down 2021 season. It just wasn't as... I'm going to say wasn't as good uh, as the years prior. You know, in 2018, he was at the Miami Marlins. 2019, first year in Philly. 2020 in the short season. Definitely not as good uh, as those three years right there. And I think part of it was he, he's a catcher. And he's, you know, dealing with a lot of injuries. He just came off of a 60-game season. And for a catcher, a guy that's, you know, on his knees, you know, every single day, he went from a 60-game season to a 162-game season. And that's really, really, you know, just hard on your knees back there, man. I mean, I definitely think he battled some injuries. And uh, that definitely affected his playing ability. That definitely affected his playing ability. Um, and I, I definitely was very, very annoyed by the season that he had this past year. He definitely underperformed. There's no doubt about that. And it was, it was disappointing to see. It was, it was very disappointing to see. 
see him have the year that he had. Uh, but I have a lot of confidence that he will bounce back here in 2022. Of course, you know, his defense, you know, a lot of people, you know, believe that, you know, he did take a step back, you know, defensively. And, I, I, and the numbers prove that. I definitely agree with that. Uh, you know, a gold glove winner in 2019, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not forget a gold glove winner and a silver slugger, uh, you know, winner for a catcher in 2019. I mean, he was the he was the BCIB. And, you know, people still, you know, think that, especially in this fan base, that he is the BCIB. No, he is not. Uh, but he could return and, you know, become the BCIB once again. Just because he's not the BCIB anymore doesn't mean he can't do it again. He easily can do it. Of course, he's got some young and up-and-coming, you, know, you know, great catchers. And, you know, like as I talked about in the last video, Will Smith of the Dodgers. I mean, you know, one of the best catchers in baseball now. Uh, and Muto is still one of the best. He's not the best. He is not the best. Um, but uh, a lot of people believe that since he was playing for a contract, he was really just up in his game and he was playing really hard and uh, he was really, you know, trying to get that contract. And now he got the contract. He's going to take a step back uh, and, you know, take his foot off the gas pedal uh, and kind of just, you know, be along for the ride. And I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that. And you go take a guy like Manny Machado and San Diego Padres. Now, I believe it with a guy like that, but not JT Mucha. Of course, that is all speculation. Uh, you know, no one can really prove that, but I mean, it's a possible explanation as to why his production was slightly down in 2021. But, but there's, as I just said, there's really no doubt in my mind uh, that he will bounce back in 2022. Uh, there's really just no doubt in my mind about that. One of the best catchers in the game. He's just a very athletic catcher. The guy can run like nobody's business. I mean, he's fast, not even for a catcher. Even if he wasn't a catcher, I'd consider him to be a fast player. I mean, I mean, it, it's just great. Of course, he's not. He doesn't have like, you know, Roman Quinn speed, of course, you know, obviously, but he, he's a pretty fast guy. Yeah, he's, he, he could definitely run. What's the speculation when the Phillies signed back? They're thinking like, oh, well, you know, Muto is getting a little bit older now. You know, just entered his, you know, his 30s. And, you know, uh, you know what, what are we going to expect here? They just signed a, you know, catcher in his 30s to a five-year deal. And the Phillies' explanation for that was, uh, is that he's an athletic catcher. Me explaining about his speed definitely proves that is that he's a very athletic guy. And also, a little stat here uh, just goes to show you how average the Phillies were in 2021. The Phillies were at league average in runs scored with 734, doubles 262, uh, home runs at 198, and RBIs at 700. And, and the funny thing I thought about this is that they had the NL most valuable player in Bryce Aaron Max Harper on the squad. Think about that. I mean, Bryce Harper club 35 home runs. Uh, and, of course, this RBI total was a little bit low, uh, but it's just pathetic. And, a, and Harper, a guy that had a career high in doubles, and that is why his slugging and OPS was as high as it was. And the only reason why the Phillies are not really talked about here in the OP and the lacking of OPS and slugging is because of their man. Bryce Harper, right, who pretty much, I mean, even though the Phillies didn't make the playoffs, I mean, he carried them to 82 wins. The only reason why the Phillies didn't make the playoffs is because Bryce Harper couldn't do it on his own. And that was an article that came out on my website, uh, I mean, you know, maybe it was last week, uh, talking about how Bryce Harper can't do it alone and Dave Gombrowski has to get him some help. I mean, we see it with the Los Angeles Angels. We see it with the Los Angeles Angels year in and year out. You know, a typical year when Mike Trout's not injured, uh, he goes out there and you know, has a Hall of Fame MVP season and he's sitting on the couch in October. And I'm, I'm sure Harper is tired of that. I mean, this is now going to be going on five years that Bryce Harper's not seen playoff baseball. Last against the Chicago Cubs in 2017, he's with the Nationals. Uh, so he's dying for he's dying for uh, you know playoff baseball. And can you blame him? Can you blame him? Uh, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. Uh, so very mediocre numbers, and it proves that Dan Gombrowski has a lot of work to do. Um, and of course, he always had to add when the lockout is over after those words, uh, which is you know kind of annoying. I'm just kind of getting used to that now. Uh, and uh, I just want to also remind you, just a friendly reminder here, that Philly Sides of Media is not just you know available on YouTube. Of course, this is the MP4 version, the only version you could see me uh, with video and audio. Uh, but also, you can find me on an mp3 podcast version only on spotify apple podcast and google podcast and you can also find me on anchor if you have an anchor account you you can listen to me on there as well so i'm not just on youtube i think it's important i bring that up i'm not just on youtube i'm on other platforms as well so please go check me out on there spotify google podcast apple podcast uh, and, uh, you know, Anchor. And go listen to me on Anchor, but that's more of a creator's app, uh, you know, for, the, you know, getting the podcast out. Not really an app you need to go listen to someone on. 
Uh, but you can listen to me on there as well. That is an option. Also, I was just digging around and looking at some some other you know uh, you know rankings. You know where the Phillies are. The Phillies farm system is ranked 27th in baseball by MLB.com. Um, so this goes to show you how depleted our farm system is and how weak it is. Uh, and yes, I know we have Bryson Scott. Yes, I know we have Mick Abel. Yes, I know we have Andrew Painter. And I understand you got this guy, Hans Kronsman, Spencer Arretrade, uh, like I talked about in the New Year's Day Q&A. Uh, but we, this is why we continue to miss the playoffs, because we, we lack homegrown talent. You need homegrown talent to win. Uh, and we don't do that. Uh, we do not have homegrown talent. We don't know what homegrown talent is, apparently. We, we don't know what that is, and we, we just really, really struggle with it. Uh, we, we just do. And honestly, on the team right now, can you really name one guy that has truly, truly been, that has been drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies? I mean, I mean, maybe Aaron Nola. I mean, a guy that I mean had a really great 2018 season hasn't been the same player since. Still, in a little glimpses of in the 2020, um, but uh, you know, really hasn't been there since. I mean, maybe Reese Hoskins, a guy that seems to fall off in the latter part of the season, whether that's an injury or just a slump. Uh, but uh, there really hasn't been one true guy. I mean, Alec Boom, who had a promising rookie season in 2020. Um, so there's really, no, there's really no one there you could like legitimately say he panned out. He 100% panned out. You can't. Uh, you can't. Um, so, of course, there's a couple guys that show glimpses of it. Not really legit 100%. Uh, so that's a definitely a problem. Um, and it's hard to bolster the front system when you're trying to compete. Uh, I brought that up, too. And, uh, you know, not all this falls on Dave Kambaski. People are thinking, like, make a trade, Kambaski. Make a trade. And I will be tired of I brought up this great point. He said, he commented and said, well, how in the world can Dave Kambaski make a trade, uh, you know, if his front system so bad? And I didn't even think of that. It's true. That's true. Some of this is, you know, just on the you know, previous front offices. This is what Dave Gorowski inherited. He inherited a bad farm system. Uh, and, and that's part of the reason. He's not going to be giving up, you know, Bryce and Scott and Micah Bell. And he already talks about how much he values Micah Bell. Now, Dave Gorowski a sneaky guy. We all know that. Uh, but this is, you know, some of the things that he inherited. And it's hard for him to make a trade when he has this kind of farm system. Excellent point by Christian Corey of MLB Chatterbox. Uh, he brings up a great point. So yesterday I made a post talking about uh, 2021 and, uh, you know, 263 videos. I'd like to thank everyone again for an awesome 2021. Uh, great year. Uh, hard to believe we're going on now, you know, almost three years. You know, of course, in 20 days, it will be three years. Uh, Philly's has the media. I really appreciate your support. And uh, 2021 definitely was an interesting year. Of course, you know, the Phillies did miss the playoffs again, which was very disappointing. I talked about how the team's performance is a bonus. Uh, 100%, it is a bonus. Uh, I just love what I do here. And the Phillies do well, then that's just, that makes it all the more great. Of course, last year was my first, you know, full 162 from start to finish, recapping every single game. You know, it's, you know, 2020 was the 60 game show season, did do every game. 2019, of course, I was covering the Phillies, you know, the entire season, but I didn't start recapping games on a daily basis until around mid-June. 2021 also brought me, uh, you know, transition into Philly's hats to media, which was, you know, a great thing uh, for this and, you know, definitely, you know, kept it in the right direction. So thank you for a great 2021. 2022 has arrived, so I'm ready to take this on. Uh, so a happy new year, ladies and gentlemen. 2022 is here. Uh, so I will see you uh, this upcoming week. Uh, and uh, I got a you know request uh, from one of my viewers to do a video about you know talking about Chris Bryant, what impact he'd be you know for the Phils, and talking about him as a potential target. Uh, so that video will be coming. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please do engage the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section. At Phillies Hats to Media, Instagram, TikTok, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at PS to Media. Car text 267 225 3292. Email me, Phillies Hats to Media at gmail.com. So I will see you all this upcoming week. Video talking about free agent Chris Bryan about what impact he'd be for the Phillies. So guys, you should watch it. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you later. Happy New Year. I'll see you guys.